Assalamu alaikum we are back with application security.io OS top 10 for API and today we are going to do the lab of lack of resources and rate limiting so let's start this lab so Lyft is a mobile riding sharing application that connects people with efficient friendly and safe drivers in their community and they have hired a hacker named as Bob for the growth hacking growth hacking is our growth marketing it is a use of resource light and cost effective digital marketing tactics to help grow an active user base, sell products and gain product exposure. So Lyft has many competitors in the field already present. So uh, they want to extend their user base, extend the drivers in their company. So what they did is they hired Bob for this task for the growth hacking actually. So they emailed the Bob and let's see what is present in the email. So this is the email that Bob received. And this is the content of email. Thanks for meeting yesterday. We are already impressed with your skills. As discussed, we like you to target car vibes driver. So they are interested in car vibes driver to get the phone numbers and whatever the information he can get from uh, car vibe drivers. So they have sent him a link that this is the website of driver.carvibe.com where the authentic, where the driver base is present. So he, they so this Lyft website want Bob to hack this website. So let's move next. So let's click on this link. So this is the website. This is the competitor of Lyft, a car riding application. So when open, Bob tried to enumerate the usernames that are already present in this car vibe list. So to harvest a driver detail from car vibe driver registration application, Bob attempts to identify and exploit a user enumeration vulnerability in which there is a process to obtain a list of valid username on this car vibe application. So let's move next. So let's create an, let's try to create an account with this information. This is a uh, pretty random information and see how the server respond us with the information. We are filling all this data very randomly to only look at how the HTTP request is crafted and what is the response that car vibe API will send on the client side. So we have, we have filled all the details and let's submit this and through the burp or OWASP app, we have captured the HTTP request before sending to the server side. So this is the API slash API slash sign up that is going to hit in the post request. And let's analyze this request in the request parameter. Upon clicking the submit, the Bob's browser generate a post request to car vibes backend API endpoint, passing his details via the request body like this. You can see. So let's move next and see what is the HTTP response we receive from the server. Now let's analyze this response as well. Analyzing the HTTP response, the server returns an error message parameter set to the phone number already exists indicating that a driver is already registered with this phone number which means if i try to brute force the numbers whatever numbers are registered with car vibe i'll get the sign up form uh, forwarded and if the phone number is not registered with car vibe i'll get this error and in this way i can enumerate the user enumerate the phone numbers which are registered with car vibe and i can con i can sell them to the lyft car sharing uh, application okay so let's brute force this let's open the so this is the error message that we will receive on the client side bob was expecting that car vibe application was sim should simply display a, display a generic message that a phone number already associated with the account however the application has generated the following error okay so the above message is indicative of username enumeration so let's enumerate the username so let's brute force this api endpoint which is slash API slash sign up and press enter. So Bob provided a list with random phone number. So whoever, whichever number is registered, the server has responded that these are the registered phone number with the car vibe. Bob's brutefox.py successfully identified valid phone number associated with registered car vibe drivers. So let's move forward. So this is the list that would be presented to the Lyft car ride sharing application. So in order to successfully exploit the username enumeration vulnerability on car vibe, Bob leveraged a lack of rate limiting on the server side, allowing his script to submit multiple phone numbers against car vibes API slash sign up. And uh, in one perspective, it is an actually a brute force attack. So let's analyze this code. The sign up method is used to control the user registration process. This method first checks whether the sign up request is invalid. That is, if the user with such details already exist in the database, then the new user would not be created if this if the same user with the same detail already exists. Okay. So if not, then this create new user method would be called and the 200 OK HTTP response would be sent back from here. In case the user details already exist, 
If on the other hand the user already exists, the field which caused the duplication error is retrieved and put into response object along with the field specific error message. So the client side would know that this is this phone number already exists or this email ID already exists. In this way, Bob has enumerated the phone numbers or he could have enumerated the email addresses also. So since no rate limiting mechanism was implemented for this API endpoint, an attacker successfully used the brute force attack to retrieve existing phone numbers from the database. Let's move next. So how we can mitigate this? To effectively mitigate against this kind of attack, developers should implement a limit on how often a client can call the API within a defined time frame. One thing, there should be a rate limitation implemented. Additionally, a generic response message should be displayed instead of field specific response. Okay, so let's analyze this code. So now that there is another parameter of request counter. In this modified code example, we implemented the rate limiting mechanism by counting the number of requests done with the sender's fingerprint. So there is a rate limitation implemented on the basis of IP address or user agent blocking all the excessive requests. So if you're not going to do this manually, you can use this packet package bucket 4j and this can help you do these things, implement the rate limitations. And once the user exists, we are not going to uh, send on the client side the field specific message. Instead, a generic error message would be sent on the client side, which is an error occurred during the sign up process. We will not tell him that the username already exists or the email already exists. So this is how the lack of resources and rate limiting issue would be resolved. So this is all from this lab. Jazakumullah khair. We'll meet in the next lab, inshallah. Allah Hafiz.